Hey everybody, it's Sherry. I have a very special message today from the animal kingdom. I love these types of messages. For those of you that don't know me, um, my background is actually with animals. I've dedicated almost 20 years of my life to working with animals in very various avenues. Um, I'm a registered veterinary technician, which is essentially an animal nurse. I have worked in intensive care for a lot of those years. I've worked at the zoo, um, at a zoo in Washington, DC for 10 years um, in conservation, in veterinary medicine. I've worked in general practice. I've managed practices. So I'm very um, in-depthly entwined with the animal kingdom. And it's very special to me um, because of my background, which I won't get into, but many of you have seen my interviews before where I talk about that. So I have been getting a lot of messages from the animal kingdom. And I feel like it's just there's so much of it that I really thought today was the day that I needed to make time to um, give you some of the messages. Uh, so I'm gonna split it up to um, our, our the roles that the animal kingdom is playing right now in our ascension and our evolutionary process uh, with regard to pets and wildlife um, and earth spirits, how they are protecting us and um, the future of, of livestock. So let's talk, let's start with our pets. So uh, domestic animals, so our pets are incredible and they, are, um, they literally are, beautiful souls that chose to come into our lives to give us um, an element of love, to uh, give us unconditional love. Um, and they are very good at it, as all of you know, um, and that have any animals. They are just, they're always there for you. They, they, they are able to pull energy there. They heal you. Cats, when they purr, they are healing you. Dogs, when they put their arm on you or they lay on you, they are healing you. And the way animals do that is through absorbing our energy because we're all energy. We're giving off energy. So when we're vibrating low and we're down and we have a bad day and we come home from our work and we sit down on the couch and our dog jumps on our lap, yes, they're excited to see us, but really what they're doing is they're like, oh, let me let me clean you off. Let me get let me get all of this energy from the day that's pulled you down and clear it out for you because they're selfless. They are full of unconditional love. They are the epitome of fifth dimension um, and they are, willing and loving and unconditionally to help us throughout our lives through different through different stresses different life phases through illnesses all sorts of things there they are here there are therapy animals we'll talk about that as well and so right now um unfortunately a lot of people are losing their animals uh, their pets are are passing away like quickly all of a sudden out of nowhere or they um, suddenly are getting diseases and they are chronically ill and then they are passing away in a large wave and what I want you to know is that a lot of them are telling me that they are they have they have a soul contract with their um, their person, their main person, and they or their family network, depending on the situation. Because generally, an animal will bond with one main person, but if there's a huge family, they will try to split their kind of their love up between everybody. But usually, there's one main focal person that they are attached to, and so and you can see that because the animal will tend to gravitate to that one person. It could be a child, it could be a parent, it could be anybody in the in the home that they that they relate to. And what I'm being told is that these animals have a contract with people ahead of time that they are here in this exact moment in their life to help them heal because a lot of us are in 4D. And I've talked about this in other videos and I'm not gonna go into it too much in this video, but 4D is about healing and uh, unraveling ourself and um, purging. You know, So a lot of us are getting sick and we are purging. We have... Uh, abdominal issues. Um, we have uh, a lot of people are very emotional and they're crying a lot. Our body has to release and purge this energy so that we can go into a higher frequency. Um, and that's part of the ascension. That's part of our transformation. And it's uncomfortable and it's it's not fun. And that's the 4D element. So a lot of people who are resisting it or not aware of it are, th are still in 3D. Those that have pretty much gone through it and are now assisting others, those people are, are probably anchoring themselves into 5D or are in 5D a majority of the time. So our animals are here in this period, a lot of them, not all, but a lot of them have decided to, to join our families to help us with that purging process because they are able to pull and help us clear that energy out exponentially in a quick way. And so that's why a lot of um, pets are passing over at this time. But what they, their message for everyone is not to be sad for them. This is their, they, this is their, um, their purpose. This is why they came. They're honored to do this for us because th this is something that they can do and they're in a position to do it and they want to do it. So when they cross over, 
you know, a lot of pet psychics are going to say this and they disagree with me, but I think this is baloney. They do come back. A lot of animals are reincarnating right now. And I am one of them. I have two pets in my house that have reincarnated. Uh, and so they do come back. They will come back if they want. Not all of them come back, but they, that, but some of them do. If that is in their alignment with what it is that they want to do and experience. And then with, with the person that they have previously worked with, if there's a compatibility and a, and a, and a need for them to come back, they will. And so um, not, so I, I just want to encourage everybody to just think about it a little bit from that perspective so that you feel a little bit less sad um, and maybe have gratitude that your animal was so amazing and that pet of yours really did service service to you and helped you go through get through this ascension in a more profound way um, so our pets are really important right now they are feeling the ascension they are very tuned to the environment and energy so let's give them a little bit of extra love right now for those that are still here give them lots of love pets hugs um, attention, walks, whatever it is that they need, because they are feeling the energy too. They understand what's going on in the ascension. They just aren't speaking to you. But, but I assure you that a lot of these animals are very evolved souls. And those out there that are saying just because they're animals, they are lower than us and beneath us. That is absolutely not the case. And oftentimes they are more evolved than we are, which is why they decide to come in to be of service to us. So our pets are an in integral, if that's the right word, a uh, part of our um, ascension, but also just our life and, and in general. And that's why they're here to help to be our companions, to give us that unconditional love. So let's, uh, let's uh, shout out to all the pets out there um, and give them extra love right now because they are doing an incredible job. Now let's talk about the wildlife. I did a video about this um, probably last year, sometime in the fall, maybe October. I can't remember which video it is, and I think I said it multiple times, but I talked about how I was told that a lot of the animals that are um, ex have gone extinct or about to go extinct or those animals that we haven't seen, even in our lifetime, I was told that when we go through the ascension, they will come back. Not all of them, but a lot of them are waiting. You know, they chose to leave this planet because they didn't want to be in this energy anymore. They saw where human beings were going. There was too much negativity. They didn't like to be in the third dimension. So they decided to uh, to leave the planet, but they are coming back. And so we have, um, to me, that's really exciting because I think the future of our world where the, where the, with the roles that our animals are going to play is going to look completely different. And I'm going to explain why in a minute, but I want to talk about protection. And so this is something that I have done. And I, and, you know, we always talk about, we get a, we have to protect ourselves right now. There's a lot of negative energy out in the planet. A lot of, um, a lot of entities have lost their hosts and they're desperately trying to find someone else to latch onto, you know, they're, they're targeting the children, they're targeting um, vulnerable adults. And so the good news is I know that in vast quantities, they're being exited off the planet. So we won't have to worry about it much, in, in much longer, but for right now, I encourage you to, to utilize the animal kingdom they're asking you to do it and the way you do that is you call in the animal kingdom for protection so i'll give you an example i had a teacher uh, years ago who was a supposed shaman who I, I took a class from her and i was severely psychically attacked by this supposed woman whatever she was and I spent tons of money getting clearings and I, nothing was working. Well, some things were working, but it wasn't really working completely. And so finally, one day, the animal kingdom said, Sherry, call, call upon us. You have to ask. And I said, and I hadn't thought about it in that way. So I closed my eyes and I envisioned them surrounding my house. I said, I call upon the animal kingdom to protect my home, my family, my children, myself, and to push this energy away from me for good. And I can't tell you within seconds, I, I could feel, sense, smell all of these wildlife animals coming onto my property, elephants, lions, giraffes, zebras, all, they were just filling, surrounding my home, just like, just there. They were just, their presence was there. I, I saw monkeys in the trees. I saw snakes in the trees. There were insects in the ground, snakes in the ground. There were eagles, falcons, um, hawks in the sky they were surrounded me in every angle possible so that no matter which way this person's energy and entities that were attached here were trying to come in, they couldn't get in. It was absolutely incredible. And I will tell you that from that day forward, 
I never had an experience with that woman again. I've never heard from her and I don't even say her name. And so it worked. So when I work with children, I, I oftentimes tell them, call on the animal kingdom to come in your room and sleep at night. What animal are you calling upon? You, you wanna call on a lion, you wanna call on a, um, a bear, whatever it is, they are here to be a service to us right now because mother earth is taking her power back. She was pulled down into third dimension and she is pulling herself out of it. And one of the ways she's doing it is her soul fractals of herself. A lot of the animal kingdom are soul fractals of Mother Gaia. A lot of earth spirits are soul fractals of Mother Gaia. And they are here in the physical form to protect this land. And they are here in full force right now to protect us, to guide us, and to assist us in the ascension. So they are encouraging us to recognize that and understand their power and utilize them, especially the children. So encourage your children to call upon the animal kingdom to protect them at night or throughout the day. Um, and I encourage all of you watching this to do the same. Um, let's go to the future of livestock. Uh, yeah, so I had a couple sessions uh, recently with different people and I got the same message for them. And then I asked the animal kingdom to give me more information. So this is where I'm seeing the animal kingdom with regards to um, the livestock and farming, dairy um, and animals uh, that are here for, um, that are being utilized as food. As, as, we sh as our bodies shift into a higher frequency, and we're seeing this right now because the children are different and they are rejecting meat. They are, but their bodies are not able to process dairy uh, because we're not meant to eat meat and we're not meant to eat dairy. And you can tell how much the dark side has pushed those things because the two most popular things to eat, at least in America, are pizza and burgers. So we got the meat and we got the cheese. And those are two things that are very bad for us. Now, those of us that have been around and had many lives and are already here, our bodies have adjusted to it. Many haven't, and that's why they're having allergies. But the children are coming in and their bodies are rejecting it. And on top of that, they the children have this innate knowing where they're, they, they're like, I don't want to eat this. This isn't right. I don't, I don't want this. And so what, what, what's going on here is all the new earth children are coming in to remind us or to teach us intuitive eating. You know, what are we supposed to eat? And that's what my the newest children's animation video is about. That's not quite out yet. Um, I'm trying to teach people about nutrition, intuitive eating, and exercise. What is our? What do our bodies need to thrive? And so the animals. What I was shown is that I can't remember the time frame because I don't have my notes. But I'm going to guess it was about within one year, the animal um, slaughterhouses and all of that are going to shift dramatically. It's the first phase is going to happen, or a lot of them are going to start to close because we have to stop this mass production of meat. And what's going to happen is. There's going to be a lot of animals, cows, uh, pigs, chickens. There's going to be a lot of animals that are, are quote unquote homeless. But this is a good thing because there are going to be these. I see these groups of humanitarians. Now, they may already exist. I've never met them, but they're, they're, this is what they're showing me. These large groups of humanitarians are going to start this whole transformational process of housing and creating sanctuaries for these animals. And I can see it very clearly. And the more information they get, the more incredible it is to me. So imagine all of those cows that are on the docket for slaughter, all the horses that are on the docket for slaughter, the pigs, the chickens. Um, these animals will be rescued, maybe even bought from these um, farmers so that they don't lose their the money that they would have made from it. And they will, how I see the first phase working is I see these humanitarians reaching out to certain people with land in different states. And in, 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 I'm seeing it in the states right now. It could be in other countries, but I, I think they're just showing me here right now. OK, but it's probably everywhere. And they're approaching these um, farming families with land and saying, can you adopt a certain X amount of cows or horses? We will give you money to help take care of it. You know, we're going to help you with this, but these animals are now free and they are to be cared for on your land. So I see them all over the place. The second phase of that, which is in a few years from now, I wish I had my notes. No, that's not it. Okay. Uh, my brain, I can't remember things anymore. I tell you guys, it's, it's full. It's over full. I can't remember everything. There's so many details. Okay. Bear with me. Okay. So maybe 23, 2024, what happens next is 
the same humanitarian groups purchase very large uh, plots of land and create much larger uh, sanctuaries so that there are uh, many cows and horses and pigs and, and um, sheep and all sorts of animals on these farms so that they could essentially live free. Um, and they're taken care of, and beautifully taken care of. They are just roaming free on large plots of land. And the beautiful thing is they, and I saw uh, maybe a little bit farther out, they open them up so that children and families can come in, but in a very respectful way where these animals are not on show, okay? This, this is not a zoo. I just wanna make it clear. It's some very respectful um, opportunity for these children and families to come through and interact with the animals, perhaps for therapy, for perhaps to communicate, perhaps just to exchange love and vibration. I do want to tell you something about cows. Now, I worked at the zoo, like I said, and I met a cow named Tulip years and years ago. On my way, I walked through the zoo as I'm going to do treatments on different animals. And there was always this beautiful black and white dairy cow named Tulip. I never really interacted with cows much until I worked at the zoo. Um, and so I didn't know the, the, that they have this amazing personality. They are loving, they are kind, they are friendly, they interact. I mean, this cow would follow me around and it would try to put his head out for me to pet him, pet her rather. And I fell in love with this cow to the point where I actually felt so guilty eating meat um, because I am a meat eater, but I am weaning myself off currently. It's, it's, it's difficult to do because a lot of it's mental where it's, you know, it's in my mind that I need to eat it. So I'm working on that myself. But what we need to learn is the wisdom in these animals and their direct connection to earth and what they have to teach us. And that's the element that I, that I see where these families and children come in and they can learn something from the animals because we're much more in tune and we're able to connect to, to them and perhaps we get messages from them. And it's, it's an exchange of energy though because the cows and the animals enjoy the interaction because it's different. It's at a level of respect as opposed to they know that they're about to get slaughtered so they're scared and terrified of people. And so I see this beautiful sanctuaries all over the world. And at that point, I see them everywhere. And it really changes the trajectory of, of, of animals and how we treat them and how we look at them, our wildlife and even pets. Um, we won't be overbreeding pets in these puppy mills. I mean, literally, if you can imagine every aspect of, of our animals and interaction and how we learn from them and, and um, uh, zoos, uh, you know, I worked at a zoo and part of the reason I left after a decade was that I actually, I left seven years into it and I started working in a different department doing program management. I won't give the details because I don't want to get in trouble, but there was an incident that happened and it really made me reflect on why are these animals in a zoo? Why are we keeping them in cages? And I started really communicating with the animals. And I said, this isn't right. I mean, I always didn't think it was right, but I thought, you know, as long as there's gonna be zoos, we should have people that are there to care for them, that genuinely love them. So I said, well, I might as well work in them and be one of those people. And, and I just wanna also preface that most people, if not all that work in a zoo, are 100% amazing, incredible people. The zoo that I worked with, those people treated those animals like family. They loved them more than, they saw them more than their own family. So they're very well taken care of. So I don't want anyone to think there was any abuse, but I just got to a point where I just, it didn't resonate with me anymore. I didn't understand it. And I communicated with a lot of these animals and they said, you know, Sherry, to some extent, we have, uh, we contracted ahead of time to be in these zoos for your learning. For the children to come in and, and be able to see us uh, close up but then it got to a point where i felt like there was it was a little bit um beyond the boundaries um and it wasn't in alignment anymore with i think the overall vision of what why they agreed to it in the first place so i see zoos that are in jam-packed in cities all of them i see them um over time uh being closed down and again animal sanctuaries being created uh, just like the ones with the cows and the farming animals, but these are more um, kind of like uh, the wild animal park in, in San Diego, but it's, but you can only view them, the way I'm seeing it is you can only view them from platforms. So it's like you're viewing them way up high, so you're not disturbing their natural habitat. So again, these animals are free. They may be separated by plots of land for, you know, you know the predators, we're not going to put the lions 
um, together with, with, with the zebras, uh, but they can, they'll be able to see each other, but there'll be boundaries. So they're, they're both protected and safe. Um, but there'll be opportunities for hunting for the line. Like there's so many elements to it. I, I could do a whole hour video on it, but I don't want to get go into great detail. But the point is what I'm trying to say is that they will have beautiful land. We have so much land that we're not using. Um, and these platforms where children can come into some more observation. So it's not disruptive at all. And it's it's high enough up that everyone's safe and you can look down and see and the children can just observe um, and perhaps their schooling, um, which we're going to change the name of schooling to learning centers, but that's a whole nother video. <laughs> uh, but these learning centers, we maybe will bring them there uh, for field trips and things like that or local families can go visit. But I just want you to understand what I'm trying to relay is that it's the it's completely different. It's a different tone. There's a respect. And there's a learning opportunity for the future generations of children to not see animals behind bars, but to see them in their natural habitat. And for those that really aren't acclimated to this climate, we're gonna stop bringing them here. So we don't need to have pandas in America. We don't need to have polar bears in America. Like these animals need to go back to the areas where they are naturally, um, that where they naturally live, where they're comfortable, instead of trying to make them acclimate to cold climates and things like that, and make them go indoors. Um, okay, trying to think if that was everything. I think that was the main message. So just understand that the animal kingdom is here to support us. They love us, they respect us more than we respect them. Let, let's just say that. And, and it's time for us to recognize their role, what they're here to do. Many of them left, but they will come back when they feel it's safe. Um, and right now, um, I encourage you to not only call upon the animal kingdom, the spirit animals to protect you, but go out, to, out into nature and, and thank the deer, thank the squirrels, thank the hawks for their role in our ecosystem and in, in, in their energetic exchange with this planet to help uh, hold the energy and hold the vibration in, in, a, higher, in a higher frequency. Um, and, and just to be here for us as well in their own way. And then of course the pets, you know, give our pets, your pets extra love and understanding and respect. And those that um, I apologize for any of you that have lost a pet. I lost my, one of my dogs last year and it was really hard, but I was at peace with it because I knew, well, she told me she was going to go a year ahead of time. That's a whole other story. She let me know that she had about six months to a year left and she would be leaving. And, um, and she did, and she did, so I was ready for it, but I understood why. And she was one of my greatest teachers. She's the one that actually taught me how to communicate with animals in a more clear way. She taught me how to do Reiki on animals the right way. Um, she taught me so many different things and she was um, an evolved an evolved earth spirit that really came here to, to guide me. And I'm, I'm very grateful for her and I always will be. And so um, thank your pets for everything that they do for you. Um, and even if you don't have pets, uh, thank the wildlife and the animal kingdom. Um, okay, everybody, I think that was the main messages today. I'm sure I forgot something, but I have another really important uh, message to bring to you guys. Um, I'll try to get it out in the next few days uh, that has to do with humanity and a message from the 144,000. So if I've forgotten anything today, I'll put it in that video. So I hope this was helpful for you guys. Have a great day and I'll, uh, I'll be in touch with all of you again soon.